Hey everybody, Stock Picks by Tim, back at you again, and I'm going to get into this real quick. We're going to go over Indy, we're also going to go over Workhorse and Bingo as well, and these are my three stocks that I'm going to be closely watching here on the last day of the trading week, Friday, and uh, let's get into it. All right, now before I get into Indy, guys, consider hitting the like and subscribe. I don't ask you guys very much, but I do post a video every single day um, regarding the market, sometimes crypto just what I've been doing, my thoughts on the market, stuff like that. Starting off right here, we're going to get into Indy and uh, the analysts over here have a price target of 1667, representing a 37% upside, a high of 18, a low of 14. And looking at the analysts here that cover Indy, they are all very high ranked analysts. We've got John Bin, five star analyst, most recent price target of 18. And looking at him here, he's a 422 out of 7,700 analysts with a success rate of 66%. Otherwise, basically two out of every three are successful with an average return of 16%. And when you look at the right here, you'll see that he does cover a lot of the uh, semiconductor stocks. You've got Broadcom, Micron, one that I've covered before. Take note that that one's a $110 price target right now. It's just in the, uh, I believe it's at like a $71 right now. And we've got Texas Instruments. We've got Qualcomm, NVIDIA. I think I got the point across here that he is one of the top analysts and also covers chip stock, so that's a good thing here to see that. And now getting into the chart here, we've still got this nice diagonal uptrend pattern here. We did break it once, but it just continued on. And I will be looking for this one to do a nice pullback Friday. Hopefully it is the end of the trading week. Well, you know, I, I feel like lately things have just been really green, but I'm hoping for a red day and I'll be buying if that's the case. Um, otherwise, I'll probably just closely watch this one because for the simple fact that I've already got a cash secured put at the $10 strike, I doubt that that's going to hit, but if it does, I will get another 100 shares of Indy. I don't want to go too crazy with this one, but one thing that I did today actually was I bought a couple of calls and they are actually long calls, 2023s, 2022s. I got out of my other ones when they ran up and I got back in today. So just letting you guys know on that. But, you know, we've been holding this trend very nicely. I'm very bullish on Indy. This is actually one of my, like, top convictions. Like, dead serious top conviction. This, Clean Spark, Charge Point, top conviction stocks here. But regardless, you know, either way, I think Indy is a buy. I think Indy is just a dollar cost average stock. Keep buying and you'll be happy into 2023. But this one is a chip play. So if we do have positive chip easing of the supply constraints, this one will rally as well along with, you know, stocks like AMD, which that actually has been going crazy. I wouldn't touch it right now. In my opinion, I'm looking for, <laughs> I remember talking about AMD when it was back at like $100 and this thing is like 135 now. Um, but regardless, I'm going to be waiting. The large, large caps are due for a pullback. It's been about a year and we haven't had a correction with large caps. So that just kind of mystifies me. I will be slowly transitioning into the larger caps if we do have a correction anytime soon i'll be slowly getting out of these smaller caps and kind of you know evening my portfolio more typically i do have quite a few large caps but right now i will admit that i am i am definitely heavy into the smaller cap stocks just because that's where i find the deals right now but i think that's it for indie guys so i got a little distracted but we are going to get into the next stock here and kicking it off with BNGO next, that's Biogenomics. Now they did report their uh, third quarter financial results. And if you look here, they've got a total revenue of 4.7 million, which represents 112% year over year total revenue increase. And that is fantastic. And another thing to take note of here, guys, is the remaining 2021 milestone is on track. We've got a strong balance sheet with a $326 million in cash and short-term investments as of September 30. I'll leave a link to this here for you guys. They did a great job. So they are improving. They're expanding. Seems like they're growing. Definitely a good thing in terms of a growth stock. Now checking at the chart here, they did get over, very, very heavily overbought as it gapped up. Just rallied on the uh, positive earnings results and now it's coming down. I would be looking for where this is going. I would keep an eye on it though. It is kind of bull flagging. It looks like it's kind of trying to form a bull flag. But I would look for this down, um, you know, in the upper five so like five and a half i don't think we're going to be trading down in this lower channel since they have very positive earnings results i think now to me this is definitely in a buy zone but just uh i would wait a second and kind of see where it tries to trade out we might have a nice red day which in that case i will be buying more bingo 
um, tomorrow. But let's get into the next one here and the last of the three stocks to buy now. Next up here, we've got Workhorse. The analysts say that $18 is the uh, resistance and seven, uh, what was it? The $7 level was the support, but uh, I'll get into where I think the levels are. That's kind of a long term to me. I'm going to go with, I'm going to give you guys more of a short term resistance to look for. But they're basically saying that the overall buying pressure still outweighs the selling pressure. But they, I think they mainly get this just from the fact that the RSI is slightly over 50. I think Friday, if Workhorse has a pullback, it is definitely a buy in my opinion. And looking at the chart here, you see there's that $18 um, resistance that they placed. But we're going to zoom in a little bit more because that's a ways out. To me, where I see our next resistance at, that's going to be at that $9 level. And it was previously a support for a short time until we just started getting that bad news, the recall, and just trade it off. But I definitely see a long-term resistance here at that $9. We could definitely have a pullback there. But for me, for now, let's just focus on breaking 8. Right now, I feel like 7. I do agree that 7 could be the floor here. You know, you can go back to my previous videos. I did say that the $6 level was the support. I think now our new support will be about the $7 level. But if you guys are cautious on this one... If you're really nervous about this one, the earnings is coming up here. I believe it's like the 9th, 9th or 10th. There's so many earnings dates coming up, guys. I'm sorry, but I believe it's around the 9th or so. So I would possibly wait for, for earnings, um, you know, with the recall and things like that. And with all the cash they're spending for ramping up their business, I think this is definitely not going to do very great on earnings. I'm not expecting it to beat, but, you know, it could always surprise us. But to me, I don't think the earnings will beat. I think it could pull back and we'll see that low sevens maybe the high sixes but that's where i'm gonna scoop this up um, but if we do have a very red day i will probably be buying some shares on friday and as a side note guys i did sell my lucid i sold the rest of my lucid i decided to take some profits on that one i feel like the upside for that just you know isn't as high as when it was in the low 20s so i took my profits on that but i'm holding cash on the side and i am buckling up for a potential correction in the large caps you know stocks like apple amd Things like that, maybe getting some more safe stuff, maybe some Coca-Cola, Pepsi, but I definitely want to see a pullback before I even consider any of those. Like I said, where I see the money to be made at, that's definitely in the small caps that have just been beaten down throughout summer. We're getting a nice little comeback here on these small caps, and that's where I'm going to focus on, at least in the short term, until I don't see much upside left. But I definitely see a lot of upside for Bingo. I see a huge amount of upside still for Indy. See upside for Workhorse as well. Thanks again, guys. I hope you got something useful out of this, and I will see you on the next one.